So I was gonna start this review out with like a little skit, right? So it was gonna be like that scene in Gladiator where like he, you know, beats all the people in the desert and then he's like, oh, are you not entertained? But it was gonna be me body bagging old people, but I couldn't get any of my regular um, play partners who are over 55 to agree to do that because they thought it would be bad for their image and would affect their duper rating, so. But you get it, right? You get the joke, like Spartus, Gladius, Gladiator. They need to make a Russell Crowe special edition of this paddle. So I know I'm behind the curve with this one, but I said I was going to give these paddles a full review, so you're going to get it. Cutting right to the chase, these paddles have been in my bag a lot longer than I thought they would be, just because they're really solid and because they're a really easy paddle to give to people who have never played with a raw carbon fiber paddle and that don't know what true pickleball nirvana is like yet, and to get them to see the light for less than 150 bucks. It punches right around the same as the Vatic Purple Prism paddles, as well as the Bison um, Rock Carbon Fiber paddles. And I'm sure there's a billion other companies out there making something similar, but those are the ones that I have experience with. Personally, I prefer the 16 millimeter over the 13 millimeter, just because that's kind of more similar to the other paddles. The Gladius 16mm has been a pretty consistent workhorse throughout the entire time that I've had it. Both paddles are a traditional elongated shape, nothing fancy there, but it works. And if it works, it works. I had a conversation recently with someone who develops paddles here in Atlanta. They made a pretty compelling point for why thinner paddles might be better for slightly older or less power focused players, just because some of that power and that pop is a little more readily available for them, even if they might prefer the feel of a thicker paddle, but the thinner paddles, you know, level the playing field. You know, if your arms all messed up in half titanium, then you can't maybe reach into the power reserves in the same way that some of us young bucks can, or some of these ex-tennis arm cannon people can utilize. The biggest thing I want to touch on here with this Gladius 13mm paddle is that I've actually been shipped two of them. The first one had a mysterious rattling noise. Almost grains of sand sounded like they were in the paddles. So I sent the paddle back and they opened it up and they found that there were little extra bits of glue hanging off the back of the paddle that had kind of snapped off and were shaking around inside the paddle. It didn't seem to affect performance whatsoever. And unless I asked people to like shake the paddle and listen, no one could tell that there was anything like slightly off with it. Customer service was super quick and responsive to get me a second paddle and I had the same issue. Another little piece of glue popped off and it's again, not affected the quality of the paddle or the way that the paddle plays, but it is something that happened that's weird. I personally think that it's probably a result of paddle companies and factories freaking out about the delamination issues that they had and then, you know, overdoing glue on the other side of things so that some kind of seeps out. But again, didn't affect performance, just something to note. I think the big takeaway here is that customer service was responsive and really understanding. I will admit that I'm really bad at cleaning the paddle faces of uh, different paddles that I use regularly. So they get gunked up and uh, dusty, 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 dusty. But it doesn't ever seem to affect the face too, too much. You know, rub your little eraser on it if you want, if that makes you feel better, but I don't notice a huge difference between paddles that I've meticulously kept clean and ones that I've just let get kind of scuffed. I'm big on these non-thermoformed raw carbon fiber paddles because so many people want to like get more competitive but don't want to spend money or feel like they have to spend the money in order to be more competitive. I just don't think that's the case. I think so many people lack the technique to use the advantages of the more sophisticated paddles that you really don't need to be spending so much on paddles. And I say that like a broken record in every review. I've got a couple more reviews on more expensive paddles coming up soon and I'll talk more about like maybe why you should get those if you want something different. If you're trying to play cost-effective yet competitive pickleball, I don't think you're going to be screwing yourself over by not getting a thermoformed paddle unless you're playing like 4 or 5 plus. And even then, I don't think it matters as much as everyone makes it out to be. And even if you are playing at that super high level, I mean, we saw a lot of pros up into, you know, halfway through this year still using non raw carbon fiber paddles and doing fine. I think one of the best things I can say about non-thermoformed raw carbon fiber paddles right now is that I'll be playing on a court full of Perseuses and Scorpiuses, you know, the new hotness from Yola, and I don't feel outgunned by the... So a little bit of a shorter review this time, but there you go. Use code NICK10 on their website if you want a slight discount if you do decide to pick up one of these paddles. I'm pretty sure I don't get a kickback from it, but hey, I'm happy to help you guys save a little bit of money. I've been cooking up quite a few simultaneous reviews, so uh, get ready for some more content, I hope, unless I, you know, get crazy sidetracked again. Anyway, bye.